Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with some more SFO Gremhammer 3 as we're still looking over all the different changes to the each individual factions of Total War Warhammer 3. Once again, I need to remind you that all the changes happening in the patch known as Art of War are focusing around battles which will be there for both custom battles and your campaign. Anything like campaign changes to mechanics and so on will likely come in future patches. In this video, we're going to focus around Z. Now this might be one of the smaller videos as Zinch didn't really need too many changes considering that the faction is quite good as it was implemented in vanilla there's just a few things to further enhance it to give it a little bit more well a bit more shield which was kind of needed and bring it more in line with tabletop representation so let's not waste any more time now and jump right in. We'll start off with all the horrors blue, pink and exalted pink. You see all of them have had their reload time reduced by 25% this means that they won't be shooting as quickly as archers which might sound like a bad thing but it keeps it more in line with that of the tabletop where they weren't really a ranged unit they were more melee focused and able to cast spells so it's a balancing effort to make sure that everything keeps kind of streamlined. This debuff is met with some buffs too, they've got faster attacks, all of them do, meaning that they're better in melee combat which is expected, especially since you don't have a lot of melee troops when it comes to Zinch, you want your basic horrors to also be your basic frontline if possible. What's been further added is the new ability known as Winds of Warpfire which replenishes your ammunition when above 50% Winds of Magic. This is quite good because still they are a range unit despite being better at melee now a little bit. So if you still want your gun line, you are still able to have it, and it works out quite well. This means that going on a horror focus, especially early campaign, which is kind of needed, you've got more access to this. All three units having it too will update your playstyle and allow you to play more with horrors. And who doesn't want to play with those little jelly babies? I mean, come on, they're cute. Exalted Pink Horrors will also make use of some explosive ammunition. This will become kind of common throughout your Zinchian roster as it shows that their ammo itself is volatile magic and not say for example a bullet or an arrow. This is quite good as you'll be able to do some area effect damage and I've kind of liked it. Honestly, it does change up my playstyle quite a little bit. And it does make, say for example, ambushes or anything to do with choke points a little better to handle, especially as Zinch. Forsaken of Zinch have had a little change to differentiate them from the other Forsaken. Here they've been nerfed a little bit with damage output, but they have a new ability called No Time for Death. This keeps entities alive so long as their leadership is up, meaning that you can just keep them alive constantly if you do have a decent amount of leadership. Their frenzy ability has been removed and now they've got a bit of a new appearance to make them look more Zinchian and defensive. These are now meant to act as a frontline unit. Obviously it's going to be a while for you to get them as you'll need to build up some buildings but by the time that you get them you're going to get your shield. This is something that Zinch was lacking. They were lacking a pretty big shield and I feel like they're a lot stronger now. It's also important to note here that barrier buffs all around have been increased to 30 instead of 20. This means that you'll replenish your barriers a bit faster and now you have more of that old school feel from the tabletop where pretty much everything Zinchin had a ward save. Instead obviously you have the barrier because that's how it was translated to here by the devs. So increasing the barrier is going to make you a bit more tankier. You're still not going to be Nurgle tanky, but you're going to be 8th edition Zinchian tanky, which I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. Chaos Spawn of Zinch also have had some big changes. First up, they've got a new look made by Dilaguana. This is to make them more unique. It's something that the Chaos Spawn have had an issue with, but they've also had an increase of entities up to 24, and they also have a new ability known as Apex Magic. This does some interesting stuff as you can see on screen. It focuses around doing some explosions, disrupting the enemy foe, and giving them some debuffs too. Less armor and less spell resistance. So this means that your Chaos Spawn will also be an effective frontline unit. Them being able to disrupt the enemy means that they'll be able to hold down the enemy much better. I've got them here versus some Celestial Dragon Guard and they're able to do quite a little bit of damage. Yes, they will take a lot of heavy damage too. Keep in mind that these are large units and the Celestial Dragon Guard are built to deal with large units 
but you can see that they're able to hold their own for just a bit, and obviously in a real battle scenario, you would have different things. You'd have the Knights of Zinch, you would have some spellcasters, you'd have some horrors coming around doing some things. So by their own, they're holding out very, very well. It's nice to see tank options for Zinch. It's baseline vanilla roster, just with a few changes here, and it just really does help out, especially if you're playing in harder difficulties like Legendary Mode, you need a bit more tank. Right now, the Chaos rosters, especially Zine, should lack from any proper defense, and it's very obvious when you start playing more and more. Eventually, that will get fixed when we get new DLC, but it's nice to see that a solution has been found here with the vanilla base game roster. Chaos Knights of Zinch have had an increase of spell resistance to 40% and immune to psychology. They've also got a brand new look, which was created by Xenon on the SFO team. Now they look a bit more Zinchian, and I'd say that the spell resistance is quite useful, especially since, well, let's be honest, even the AI relies a lot on spells, so being able to be a bit more resistant to it is going to keep you incentivized to actually use them. The new look also transfers to the Doom Knights, which look really, really great. They've also been given the 40% spell resistance, Strider Tribute, and Cavalry Bane. This is to make sure that they are able to do a bit more damage and slow down any sneaky, fast-moving units, like, say, for example, Suneshi Seekers. This is an effect that you'll see in various different factions in SFO3, which is going to stop the Suneshi spam that you might see, and, well, just work generally against cavalry. You can't buff up everything without giving it a possible counter in a unit or so, so at least you have something to fight back with. Soul Grinders has some cool effects now. First up, they've got Wall Breaker, so they're very good at sieges. As you may know, sieges are very different in SFO Grimhammer, as walls and gates have been increased in terms of how much damage they can take, so you're gonna need big units like this if you want to smash down some walls quickly. They've also got Shield Breaker, which is a contact effect that is added to range attacks. This is a debuff to enemies and it makes range attacks even better. So if you want to focus on range builds, you're going to want at least one or two soul grinders. And now the projectile shoots five instead of one. This makes it so, well, you know, you can have a bit more fun. It's always kind of cool to see a soul grinder shoot a lot of stuff. Chaos Furies of Zinch have been given the Guardian ability to make them a little bit more useful. I mean, it's still a Chaos Fury, let's just be honest here. They're trying their best. Even Games Workshop couldn't make Furies useful, and this was like years and years in different army books. At least now you do have a flying fast moving unit which can flank about and try and keep your heroes safe by using Guardian. So now you've got a little bit of a benefit. This is, of course, just in case maybe your Herald or your Iridescent Horror gets stuck in combat, and you need something to help it out at least very quickly. Lords of Change, the monster variants, have been given the Magic Bond ability, which will increase power recharge rates. This is so you can keep the whole situation of keeping more magic going and flowing as much as possible, especially if you're like me and you like Doom stacking. and keep in mind that they do use Winds of Magic, so you want as much as regeneration of Winds of Magic as possible, but generally they'll work very much the same. However, they do also have a new buff known as Blinded. This is a debuff that they'll put on enemies when in melee combat, which reduces their accuracy, melee defense, and melee attack. So if you want to bring your Lords of Change into combat, now you can. You've got reason to, and you don't have to worry about them dying out too quickly. Exalted Lords of Change have been given two new abilities, the first being Unholy Pact with the Changer, which will act as an area of effect heal. Right now, there's no heals for Zinch, so this is going to help out quite well. It's also going to give him immune to psychology and some extra spell resistance. And the second is Soul Leech of Zinch, which is a direct damage spell. Once again, these are ability spells, so they don't cost Winds of Magic. And what this does is it obviously does some damage, but also does a debuff, which reduces melee defense and spell resistance, meaning that if you cast this on an enemy and then focus fire some spells, hey, things are going to go quite well for you. Cultists of Change have been buffed up to provide some extra firepower here, literally firepower. So first we have Apex Magic, which causes a small explosion around the area. It's there to disrupt the enemy a little bit and also does place a debuff of minus armor and obviously spell resistance too. They'll also make use of the Banner of the Eternal 
additional flame ability which will increase base weapon damage and provide flaming attacks once again, and a searing flame debuff which is on contact with melee attacks which reduces melee attack of enemies, increases their weakness to fire and reduces their armor. So if you want to bring them up close they're more viable now and you know it can be quite interesting. Take them up close, make them weaker to fire and then just cast a big spell. Hey, it's always kind of fun. Flamers of Zinch have had increased entities from 12 to 16. This means that you can get a lot more firepower out, but you will take a lot more damage if they start holding you down. Now, they've also had a few other buffs here. While they do have high melee damage, they've got low melee attack, but their range was also increased from 90 to 100, so you're a bit better off to fire from a bit of a further distance. That's always really good. Exalted Flamers will now have a buff increasing their utility overall in-game with bolstered marksmanship. This is an area of effect passive ability, which increases armor pissing missile damage, base missile damage, and obviously accuracy. This is to make them more buffer based. They're still very high at being able to have a lot of damage, damage output, but they'll also work very highly in support too, which is kind of how I always envisioned them, so I think this works out quite well. It's nice to have something that generally buffs up your units, it's like its own type of blood throne in a sense. And finally for unit changes we have the Burning Chariot of Zinch, which has a increased plus 20% missile resistance, so they're not just that much of a target. However, their projectile masses have been lowered by 33%, so they don't stagger enemies that often. The missile resistance makes them much more viable, and the debuff needed to happen because it was just making armies stagger too much, and... It was a bit ridiculous in a sense, so this works out quite well. Overall, the spells have also had increased cooldowns, just like Sinesh did. This is just to make the game not so dependent on spells. You still have access to a lot, and keep in mind that you're still Zinch, so you're able to bring loads of different spellcasters and make use of them, because that is your main benefit. It's just not having too many spells come out from one caster at a time. Also, the battles are longer, so you still kind of balance it out. You can see a few changes to the spells, but overall, Zinch feels more much better. The main thing with Zinch is you're more defensive, you do have a lot stronger range, you've got more utility, you've got more buffs. It works out quite well to add a bit more flavor to the faction, which, let's be honest, isn't a very good place in general. But with all that being said, these are the changes for Zinch. If you have any thoughts and comments, please leave them below, as Venris does check them out and does reply and takes things into consideration for future patches. And tomorrow we'll be back with Nurgle and Korn. There's a lot of SFO videos to come, we still have to cover pretty much a few different factions, but I hope you're enjoying the series and I shall see you all very, very soon. Have a good day.